This is why you buy a Model X. <laughs> oh man, oh my side hurts. But even as fun as that was, I don't think this car is worth it for most people. If you're looking to buy a Tesla SUV in 2024, your options are either Model Y or Model X. And which one should you go with? The Model Y is the world's most popular vehicle. It's got a lot going for it, but the Model X is more sporty, it's more powerful, it's more luxurious. But does that mean it's worth like over two times the price? So I'm gonna get a little controversial here in this video and explain why I think that most people shouldn't buy a Model X. You should probably go Model Y, though I should mention some insane deals on Model X that make it the cheapest we've ever seen it. Let me sort of break this down, explain what I mean by this, help you with your Tesla buying decisions in 2024, talk about the latest confirmed news on Model Y Juniper, and also give a huge thanks to LastFit for sponsoring this video. Now, I recently did a full video sort of going over my nine-ish month experience with my 2023 Model X Plaid. I went over all the quirks and features, all of my likes and dislikes, and I'm not gonna rehash that all in this video, so if you wanna check out that video, I'll leave it linked at the end of this one so you can watch this one, then go click easily right into that one. But long story short, I really do like this vehicle. There is a lot that Model X has to offer. But the more I drive the Model X and the more I live with it, not only do I think that most people would be much better served by a Model Y, but also the Model X is sort of this forgotten Tesla that Tesla themselves doesn't really seem to care about a lot in 2024. And I'll come back to that more in a moment, but first I do wanna mention that there are some unique advantages and features the Model X has over the Model Y. Even though it is more expensive, you're not getting nothing for that extra price. It actually is packed with a fair amount of cool stuff. Compared to the current Model Y, there are some special features here you're not gonna find in its sort of uh, younger sibling. One of them is going to be two screens here by default. So you sort of have a screen here for uh, your speed and your range and weather and stuff like that. You also have a larger main screen. I believe this is 17 inches versus the 15 inches inside of Model 3 and Model Y. And this screen can not tilt if you care about that at all, which is kind of cool. You also have the option for a regular round wheel or a yoke, which is my preference here. I like the yoke that is here in Model X. Also some smaller things, sort of a different center console here with a little bit more space. You've got a big uh, storage cavity here as well. Obviously a big feature on Model X, of course, is going to be Falcon wing doors. That's something you're not gonna find on Model Y. And also what's currently not on the Model Y right now as well is going to be a rear screen. So you do have a rear screen back here for back passengers to listen to music or watch movies and you can connect uh, wireless Bluetooth headphones to that as well, so you can enjoy that in the back of Model X. Model X also has some other creature comforts as well. You are gonna get cooled ventilated seats uh, in the front. You're gonna have power doors for all the doors, so if you walk away, I'll show you here from the driver's side door uh, behind me there, that will eventually close. Um, you're gonna get a better sound system in there. You do have uh, noise cancellation with the speakers, though I don't really notice a difference with that. But as fun as the Model X is, the big question everyone always has is all about price, which makes a lot of sense when you're spending your hard-earned money. More realistically, these days it's, is the Model X worth more than two times the price of a Model Y? And after I run the numbers these days, I don't think so for most people. Even if you've got a real need for speed, you can buy an amazing version of the Model Y, a Model Y performance, so you get a bunch of room and also a lot of performance uh, extras and goodies for a hair under $44,000 if you qualify for the federal tax credit since this vehicle is fully eligible for the $7,500 federal tax credit as long as you qualify for the federal tax credit on your end. Compare that to the Model X Plaid, which granted does have a faster zero to 60 time, it does have an extra motor and does have some other goodies and features in there, but it's also like $95,000. So over double the price of a Model Y, or to put it this way, you could buy two Model Y performances and still have some money left over 
like a considerable amount uh, than compared to one Model X Plaid. Now, in addition to all that, unlike the Model Y, if you do step up to the performance tier of Model X, which is the Plaid offering, you are going to get some extra goodies around the vehicle. With the current Model Y performance, you basically get better tires and a rear spoiler and obviously the performance, but you don't get any noticeable sort of visual changes in the car. That is actually a little bit different here on Model X. If you go Model X Plaid, you do have the same wheel options. So you do get the red brake calipers there, denoting it is a Plaid model. Now, both the long range and Plaid Model Xs both have this fixed height spoiler. So that isn't anything special for the performance model, though you will notice this Plaid badge down here does denote this is the sport model or the Plaid model, the fastest production SUV out there. Um, that's the badge that lets you know that. Now, I should also mention one of the qualms of Model X in 2024 is that when compared to other Tesla models, it is missing some pretty significant features. No RGB ambient lighting, no steer by wire like Cybertruck, and also um, the floor mats it comes with, especially for the price, aren't very good. That's why I'm currently equipping my Model X with some amazing all weather liners custom made to perfectly fit in my Tesla, made by this video sponsor, LastFit. I have been using their mats on, I think, all of my Teslas, Model 3, Model Y, now the Model X. I've tested them on a lot of different models and they have been fantastic and they're the mats I'm using right now in my Model X that you're seeing in this video. LastFit has got an incredible selection of all weather liners for basically like almost every vehicle on the road, including the entire Tesla lineup. And there's a couple of reasons why I love them so much. One is sort of the aesthetics. They match the interior of your Tesla really, really well. And also they're made of super high quality TP material that is both durable. So if there's scratches and scuffs and dirt and debris flying inside of your car, like there is with my two and a half year old in the back, uh, it's going to sort of withstand all that. Plus I love that it is super easy to clean. Get a little water in there, wipe away all the dust and debris, and it looks good as new. I love that these are also custom made for the Tesla, so they're gonna fit really well. There's not gonna be any awkward um, components here. It's gonna fit in your Tesla really well. Of course, super easy to just drop them in and you're good to go. And I love the peace of mind knowing that all the most important parts of my Tesla are protected because if you're gonna buy a Model 3, Model Y, especially a Model X, you're spending this money, you want your Tesla interior to be protected and um, the stock base mats that Tesla gives you, if they even give you mats, really aren't very good. You want some all weather liners that are durable, tough, you want them to be able to withstand the uh, elements, uh, whether that be a rainstorm or a little bit of uh, water that hits the ground of your car, you want it to be able to withstand all that. And these Last Fit liners have been amazing. I love these Last Fit liners. I know you guys are gonna love them as well. So if you wanna learn more, check them out for yourself today and give your Tesla a much needed upgrade and fix one of the biggest missing pieces of your car. And that is some really nice all weather mats. Uh, check out the link right down below to learn more and uh, pick up some Last Fit liners for your Tesla today. Moving in inside, really just three visual changes here let you know that you have a plaid. One is that the six seat configuration is the only seat configuration you can go with uh, for the uh, Model X plaid. So you've got the two captain's chairs here, and then you've got the two in the back that collapse down if you wanna have some storage. Um, you have the performance aluminum uh, pedals here. Those come standard with the plaid. They don't come with the long range. And then really the only big thing you're gonna notice here is the carbon fiber uh, accent material here. This replaces is the wood trim that is in the long range. So where you see carbon fiber here, that would typically be wood um, on the long range version. And of course that's gonna extend all down here as well. Um, you know, carbon fiber, carbon fiber, carbon fiber dash. Again, no RGB emulating or anything, but carbon fiber there. And then this material here is just sort of standard for the darker interior. So really it's the carbon fiber, it's the six seats and the aluminum pedals. Not as much as you might expect and probably not as much as you'd want either for a car costing this much. Not even the yoke steering wheel, by the way, comes with the plaid. That is an additional upcharge and remains that way. Now that's like the cosmetic stuff. You do still, of course, get things like the triple motor setup and you know, the plaid powertrain and all that stuff, but I'm talking cosmetically speaking, that's the big stuff you're actually gonna notice. And especially when you look at the other Teslas in the lineup these days, you've got Cybertruck, you've got the new Model 3. The new Model 3 performance, by the way, is a screamer of a good car and also a really good deal since this qualifies for the Feral Trax credit. So that's something to look at as well. But the question I get all the time is, okay, if Model X is more than double the price, are you getting double the features or double the functionality inside of a Model X? And by and large, no, you're really not. 
Now, it used to be a lot easier for people like myself to rationalize the move from a Model X long range to a Model X Plaid, because if you wanted a six seat configuration, which I think is one of the better options to go with, it was like a $3,000 difference um, between a Model X long range with six seats and Model X Plaid with, obviously it only comes with six seats. And that was enough for myself and many others to make the jump to Plaid. These days though, I think the spread is a lot more significant and it is well beyond $3,000 to go from a Model X long range and a Model X Plaid, especially these days, thanks to a Tesla promo uh, special running right now, that if you purchase FSD, will actually give you any seat configuration for free, including the six seat configuration, which is usually an additional $6,500. So basically you're spending $8,000 to save 7,500 because you get the tax credit, plus you technically save the 6,500 for the seat. So basically you're getting like $14,000 worth of goodies there for $500 out of pocket if you factor in all those savings. So there is something to be said about that really good deal for Model X long range, but even with that said, as great as a, a deal that is, still gonna be way more than a Model Y, even a Model Y performance. Then it just gets cheaper if you go down to Model Y long range. And this is where as a Model X owner myself, I do struggle to recommend Model X if you're looking sort of at choosing between Model Y or Model X. Yes, the Model X does have an active suspension and an adaptive suspension. It does have a very, very smooth ride. My wife who drives the Model X a lot and then even had driven my Model Y a lot says she much prefers prefers the ride in Model X because it is way more comfortable. You also have just a more spacious interior. You've got a better sound system. You've got those two screens. You've got, of course, the Falcon wing doors and Model X, of course, is going to give you a bit more versatility when it comes to seating configurations. For Model Y, you've got five seats or seven seats and the last third row there on a seven seat Model Y is pretty, pretty tiny. Whereas with Model X, you could by and large comfortably fit seven people, more comfortably fit six people and five people. You've got plenty of room there and then also a lot of storage space in the back as well. Now, one thing I do wanna make sure I communicate in this video is that after driving both Model Y and Model X extensively, I do think the Model X is a more comfortable car to drive. I think that I, I was gonna be doing a ton of driving and road tripping, especially with children or just a lot of passengers. The Model X is going to offer hands down, just a more comfortable ride for everyone. Now, whether that's worth more than double the price is definitely up for debate, but I do think that the interior feels more spacious. You've got that air suspension system, which is going to make the ride more comfortable and more smooth. As of right now, the Model Y does not have any sort of rear screen, so that's one of the big advantages that Model X has, plus just a really good sound system. And I just think just a better, more comfortable riding experience. Not to say that the Model Y is bad, but of course, since we're talking Model X and Model Y, I do think that in terms of doing a lot of driving, I'd rather be in the Model X, especially if I'm gonna be doing uh, a lot of road tripping. But even with all that said, you're spending a lot of money to go from Model Y to Model X, and I don't think in its current form that price is necessarily justified, especially since when you're in Model X uh, pricing category, um, you've got the Rivian R1S and other higher end EVs and non EVs that really make Tesla seem a little uh, behind in terms of luxury features. And it's interesting because we've started to see a lot more speculation from some people digging into the Tesla numbers that Model S and Model X really aren't selling all that strongly, and maybe they're sort of past their prime. Maybe as obviously Model 3 and Model Y have exploded with growth, and we're talking about Cybertruck and these next generation vehicles that'll be the big wave for Tesla growth, where do the Model S and Model X fit in this sort of category? And I guess Model S to a certain extent being the fastest Tesla, I get it. Maybe there's a place for that until we see a new Roadster. But Model X is sort of just this awkward child, especially when you compare it to Cybertruck, because I do think there's a much larger overlap between Cybertruck customers and Model X customers than many would potentially realize. Obviously, if Tesla wants to make the Model X more competitive in 2024 and 2025, this car does need some sort of refresh. Beyond just RGB ambient lighting and a front bumper camera, I think Tesla needs to do more to denote this as a higher end vehicle, sort of like Cybertruck. It really should have steer by wire. It should have some other higher end uh, options and accessories and functionality that you don't get with Model Y. 
But I will say at the end of the day, if you do want, I think the ultimate family hauler, you want the comfort and you want the flexibility of more space and you want some more high-end Tesla goodies, there is a place for Model X, at least in its current form, but that is not going to be long before this world. I think the Model Y has a lot to offer. The savings alone are going to be significant for many uh, of you watching this video. And then especially when the Model Y Juniper refresh launches, the Model X is gonna be way more antiquated because Model Y is gonna have all of those features it's currently really missing when compared to Model X. So if you're doing some cross shopping of these two vehicles and you've got some questions, drop a comment down below. I'm happy Happy to answer as someone who has owned Model Y and Model X and driven them extensively. Happy to help you out. And of course, everyone watching this video, I have a great mix of Model X owners, Model Y owners, and then probably a lot who own both. Um, if you've got a question, we'll be happy to answer in the comments down below. And if you made it to the very end of the video, I've got a secret you need to know, and that is that you can actually win a Tesla of your choice or $50,000 cash. Yes, you can even win a brand new Cybertruck. This is all made possible by Chicago Chessid and their 10th annual Tesla raffle happening right now. And if you haven't heard of it before, Chessa Chicago is dedicated to helping families in crisis. It's a nonprofit. They're funding 80 plus programs and trying to help families get back on their feet by offering goods, services like food, furniture, job placement, and so much more. So if you want the chance to win a Model S, X, 3, Y, Cybertruck, or $50,000 cash, link is down below. And you can get $25 off two tickets or $500 off 15 tickets by using my special promo code Robert. Hurry up though, tickets are limited. Only 9990 tickets will be sold. So get your tickets today. Do not wait. Again, link is down below and use that special promo code Robert. Also, just want to give a big thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring and supporting this channel. They have got over 400 artworks in their collection from names you've heard of, Picasso, Warhol, and Banksy. And as the economy right now is up and down and up and down, you're probably looking for a different investment strategy. And one of the best places to actually put your money is in fine art. Billionaires know it, banks know it, and now you can get a piece of the action as well. Masterworks makes it so simple, so easy. Over 900,000 users have signed up. And if you want to get immediate access, skip that wait list. All you've got to do is scan the QR code on screen right there or head to masterworks.art slash Rosenfeld to learn more and get started today. And again, skip that wait list and get immediate access right now. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you all. I am Robert Rosenfeld and I'll see you in the next one.